Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back. Today I am beyond excited to share with you the light spring or soft spring seasonal color analysis makeup tutorial. So without further delay, let's get right into creating this fun spring makeup look. Getting started with the light spring or soft spring makeup tutorial, I have already done my complexion off camera. The Lisa Aldridge Seamless Skin Foundation and I have shade five, which is, I think it's fair with neutral undertones. To get the spring look, I needed to neutralize everything. So I used the Bobbi Brown corrector stick, and then under my eyes, I used the Luna concealer. This is a Korean beauty brand, and the shade I have is shade number one. We are going to start adding some color to the skin, and the first product I'm going to use to create my light spring look, Stila Convertible Color in the shade Lilium. I'm going to use my foundation brush. Lilium is a classic color, a really beautiful, pretty neutral peach pink shade. And you can apply this any motion that you want that you find flattering for your face. I'm going to apply it a little bit more in an elongated triangle. So going from the hairline to the inside next to the bridge of my nose down to the bottom of the ball of the cheek. I'm staying in line with the bottom of the nose. That way I don't drag the center portion of my face down and then pulling it back to the hairline. That's gonna give me a general rosy flush to the skin. With the poll that I did on my YouTube community page, choosing the light spring makeup look. Winner was a very soft look where it looked like there was very minimal eye makeup and more of a muted peachy pink stain on the lips. And then the secondary winner was more of similar lip color, but a little bit more on the nude side with an eyeshadow look that is a little bit more smoky but natural. Light spring makeup looks tend to lean towards the more natural side. So I want to elevate this a little bit more than the winning makeup looks that were on the community page. The makeup look I did last year for light spring would be very reminiscent and I just wanna have this dialed up just a pinch more so you can elevate a look for a more kind of evening or party occasion if you want to. That being said, a good no makeup makeup look is always one of the perfect looks for a party or any occasion in my opinion. If we compare the light spring color palette to the warm or true spring or bright clear spring, light spring or soft spring has a very high color value, which means it's going to be higher in the overall yellow tonality of the palette, which is going to make it feel warmer. Brightness is also quite high, which means it's going to have more of an overall hue shift of white, which is going to make everything have a little bit more of a pastel yellow undertone to it. And it's going to feel very bright and very clear. Looking at the colors, they're going to feel almost translucent, especially when you compare it to a color palette like Bright or Clear Spring. That palette is very saturated in comparison, even though the brightness and the value of the colors are similar. Saturation is going to be higher. And that's so. going to be the overall feeling of the makeup look. Even though we're going to have an element of smokiness on the eyes. Everything is going to feel very natural, lit from within, and to have a translucency of the colors on a light spring, regardless of what the hair color is or the skin tone is, it's going to look absolutely perfect. I want my lip color to be one of the bigger play factors as that is something that was seen in the winning makeup look. I'm going to use the NYX Slim Lip Pencil in the shade Nude Pink. My coloring is the light summer. I neighbor with light spring, which means the two palettes can borrow from each other and work pretty well. In the base features, which help to separate people into one palette or the other, there will be little things like a light summer is going to have more of a cool, neutral undertone, whereas light spring is going to be more of a warm, neutral. My lip color is gonna be a little bit more of a cool toned, rosy, mauve pink. It's a lip color I want for this look to create that light spring lit from within. Warmer tone is going to be like the lower lip where I apply the lip pencil. The warmer undertones have neutralized the coolness that we see in the top lip. And there is this brightness that just feels like it is just a little bit more vibrant. Like there's something from, there's almost like a white base underneath pushing light forward. And that is one of the magic characteristics of the light 
color palette, whether that is going to be your light soft spring or light or bright summer lip color. This is going to be a color that you can wear daytime, nighttime, any occasion you want, kind of like the look that we're creating overall. And there's two colors I was torn between. One is a little bit more of a light summer color. One is going to be a little bit more of a light spring color. Huda Beauty Cream Lipstick in the shade Angel. And then I have one of the newer Bobbi Brown's Luxe Lipsticks in shade 309 Pale Mauve. And then if we look at the two side by side, they look very similar. Stila Convertible Color Blush and Lilium that I've applied to my cheeks, the Huda Beauty Angel. Here is Bobbi Brown Pale Mauve. If we look between the two, they are very, very similar. Angel has a little bit more of a brown orange undertone where the Bobbi Brown Luxe Lipstick in Pale Mauve has a little bit more peach blue based color, almost like a peach blossom. I am going to use the Bobbi Brown. It has this look that just feels a little bit brighter and with my skin tone and coloring to really drive this look to something that is a little bit more elevated, more party ready, I want a lip that has a little bit more brightness, a little bit more pop. As you all know, I'm a huge fan of borrowing from the neighboring palette. So for slight spring or soft spring, we could borrow from either warm, true spring or from the light or bright summer palette. Or the third option is to borrow from light spring's sister palette, which is going to be soft or muted autumn. I'm gonna borrow a lip pencil just to give the lip color a little bit more structure and a little bit more definition. So for that, I'm gonna be using a pencil from Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is in the shade Macaron. Very reminiscent of the lip color, a little bit darker though, and more muted. And now that we have the lip color on, it's just going to feel a little bit softer and a little less stark and a little bit less punchy. Now let's move on to eyes and create smoky but natural color. I'm going to start by using IT Cosmetics Superhero No Tug Gel Liner in the shade Cosmic Copper. You can apply your eyeliner any way that you are happy with. I'm going to line my upper waterline and the outer half, focusing on keeping the innermost portion thin and getting slightly thicker to build up a little bit of shape. So once I have, once you have your eyeliner on, I recommend doing one side before moving to the other. We're going to take a small brush. This is a BK Beauty A504, and I just want to soften that eyeliner. But to create our light spring or soft spring look, I like to have a soft haze on the eye. The palette has that translucency to it, so I don't want anything to feel too harsh or too stark. Applying my eyeliner first and then softening out the edge, it's going to give me a nice halo around the eye. Nothing has a harsh start or stop. I'm going to be using Eyeshadow Quad from the brand Roman, which is a K-Beauty brand. I love K-Beauty for the light spring and light summer color palettes as both palettes have a high influence of white. And in K-Beauty, we find a lot of products that are focused on brightening or expanding the appearance of our facial features. And by nature, those have a lot of white undertones. Finding these light or bright colors to apply and our makeup is really easy in K-Beauty. And the formulas compared to some products we have here, they're a lot more affordable without sacrificing performance. They're just really beautiful and they're quite buildable. So you can keep them very soft, like I personally like makeup, or you can build it up to be a little bit more intense. The one I'm using is from the brand Roman, and this is a Better Than Eyes quad. And this is in shade W03 Dry Strawberry. First thing I'm gonna do is grab a flat packing brush. This is a BK Beauty A5. And I'm going to start with this pastel orange shade. It's very reminiscent of like a fresh peach ice cream right over my entire eyelid going slightly above the socket. So we're taking it when you open your eyes, you can use your finger the back of the brush. Feel for where the socket or hollow of your upper eyelid is. And then you want to go just above that with this peachy shade. And when you get to this outer core we applied the eyeliner, it's okay, apply right over it. That's gonna help give you gradation of color. 
switch over to using a large fluffy brush. This is a BK Beauty A501. And I am going to move into this slightly neutral leaning warm strawberry. This is what I'm gonna apply in that socket line, tilting my brush up at about a 45 degree angle to create a gradation of color. When I have less press my brush, I'm gonna start creating little buffing circular motions, keeping the brush pointed upwards to the fuse. And when I get to the outer corner, we can either start buffing and pulling it to the lower lash line or buffing it towards the tail of the eyebrow to create more of a winged elongated shape. I think today I want to go for a little bit more of an elongated shape. Now I'm going to go back to my flat packing brush and I want to mix together peachy shade and the pink shade. And I'm just mixing those on the point of my brush to my lower lash line. And then when I get to the outer corner and we're just going to work our way up and connect to the eyeshadow we blended out in the top. See here, we're already creating this intense to the eye, which feels counterintuitive because we're using two lighter pastel shades. They are building into this more watercolor effect which is going to add a bit of a dramatic edge and create visual contrast with light spring light summer which since there is such a high influence of white in the overall color palette when you start working with deeper skin tones you are going to have to adjust the colors that you choose for makeup because if you try a light peach like this on someone with a darker skin tone say someone who wears like a mac nc 45 either the color is not going to show up or it's going to impact emphasize those pale white undertones and make things look ashy or gray on the skin. So you're gonna have to bump up the overall saturation intensity of the color. On my skin tone, it might be something that looked more like a primary orange, but on your skin tone or someone with a darker skin tone, it's going to have more of that soft, peachy, slightly pastel effect within makeup. Clothing is different. It's going to be more of a solid, more opaque fabric that we are draping over the skin where makeup has a little bit more of a translucency to it. So now I'm going to move to a BK Beauty A502. This is more of a medium sized blending brush and I want to use the darkest shade, which is going to be a little bit more pink chocolate. My eye open looks straight ahead. Place right in your outer corner where you want the most most depth to be. And when you're looking at your eye, you should almost see a point in the eye, even with someone with hooded eyes like me, you should see a point within the shape of your eye somewhere just above the outer corner. If you follow it straight up, you should see a point right out here where your eyelid skin naturally pushes back. Add your shadow there and then work it out. And that will help you create the most natural looking placement for adding some drama and some depth to the eyeshadow look. Place my brush down and I like to do these little buffing circles. I'm not moving it outside of where I place it. It's just right there where I place it, placing my brush. And then after I've buffed in that little circle, I can use a light hand and start pulling out, work my way back in, and then pull into the lash line. I'm using these little buffing motions and making these micro movements to build depth. And it doesn't look like my hand is traveling that far. I've traveled from here to here and here to here. It's a very small, very tight V shape. It's going to help create this visual depth. Yeah, so if we look at this side, this side where it has a depth, it's creating more of this curved effect to the eye, which is creating to this overall shapeliness of the eye and gives a little bit more of a smoky drama compared to the side, which just has that colorful halo around it, which if you pair a little bit of mascara, fine, great. You have that anchor to make it wearable for every day. But here is where you take it up to the next step. So once you have both sides on, now is where you want to take a full step back from your mirror, look side to side, tilt your chin up, look down, look at how the eye is shaping. Find where you want to add shape and structure. I am going to build this up up a little bit more. I'm gonna pull onto the outer half of my lid a little bit more and buff into the outer corner of my lash line. More so, I'm filling in that previous V shape and as I blend, I will extend the edges or the arms of that V shape. I still want to focus on using small, tight, precise buffing motions because we have three shades right here. And if you look at 
the brown and compared to the orange and the pink. These two almost, you could almost mix these two together and add a little bit of depth or a little bit of a black to, to create a shade like this. That means they are all quite similar. If we over blend and you overwork the shades, it's gonna look like you just have a muddy kind of smudge of color on the eyes, which can work and be very beautiful. But to really keep the magic of the color palette, work a little bit more slowly, build your layers gradually and create a subtle blend. That way things still have that over overall color intensity and that effect that you're going for. So now I'm gonna go back to the large brush. This is the BK Beauty 8503. I'm gonna pick up the pink color on top of that pink chocolate shade. I'm just going to lightly buff back and forth like a windshield wiper motion right on the edge. And then on the lower side to side, work my way under halfway or right under the iris, pull out. There we go. So now we have a little bit more of that smoky pink depth. Now we're going to move on to the shade I'm most excited about. And for me, it's one of the highlights of K-Beauty eyeshadows. I'm going to use my ring finger and pick up this shimmer shade. And I'm going to start in the middle of my eyelid, press and pull towards the inner corner of my eye, and then wrap up. This color is overlapping any of that remaining orange shade that we've applied. And you can build it up as many times as you want. For me, I feel like two layers is the magic spot. And I want to create a little bit more brightness. So now I'm going to use my small finger or the pinky finger, pick up that shimmer shade, pull it on the first half or the innermost half of my lower lash line. These more shimmer topper shades in K-Beauty palettes tend to work better with your finger as they have a natural emollients within the formula, so your finger will help pick it up and then distribute it a little bit easier. Try and figure out what works best for you and your preferences. So far, I have just applied my cream and liquid complexion products and the cream blush before moving on to lips and eyes. So let's set a little bit of powder, J-Cat Aqua Assurance powder and this is the shade ivory with a large fluffy brush this is a bk beauty number 102 i'm going to tap off most of the products so there's thin veil. My liquid and cream products have been setting on my face while I did my lip makeup and my eye makeup. So I only need a teeny tiny bit. I'm going to start off with a little bit of bronzer and the bronzer I'm using today is the Rimmel London Natural Bronzer Waterproof Bronzing Powder in the shade 021 Sun Light, which looks like this. I'm going to use that same brush I used to powder and I am just going to pick up a small amount, tap off most of the product, and here on the outer corner of my face, I am going to just buff right here. It's almost like a big C shape. I'm gonna kind of keep my blush to this section right here. That way the center portion of the face stays bright and I'm more so using this bronzing shade very, very lightly to mimic the brown orange intersecting shade that we have on our eye. But this is also going to help push more focus and brighten the overall appearance of the center portion of my face. Light spring, like most other spring palettes, does not do the best with contouring. Contour colors tend to have a high influence of gray, and gray is inherently a little bit more cool in undertone. So using something like a bronzer with a translucent finish and something that has a little bit of that soft orangey yellow color is going to work really well for this palette. So using something like that very lightly with a very intentional placement can help just to brighten up the face and I took whatever was left on my brush which is not much at all right over the bridge of my nose right over the chin just to make things feel more cohesive. Next I want to add a soft highlight and I really want my eyes and the shimmer on the eyes to be the center point of the face so for my highlight I'm going to use a setting powder and this is from Laura Mercier translucent loose setting powder light catcher in the shade celestial light technically marketed as a setting powder, but I find the shimmer to be a little too intense to apply all over the face, so I like using a fluffy brush and applying it right where I want my highlight to be, so high on my cheekbone, overlapping the bronzer right here versus the side without. This definitely has a fat as a very subtle highlighter, and it creates that really beautiful lit within glow. I'm gonna take a little bit on my nose bridge, on the ball of my chin, right over the arch of my brow. This is one of my favorite anti-aging makeup tips. Instead of applying your brow highlight under the arch, apply over the arch. As we have more birthdays, facial features tend to lower, and eyes can appear more hooded. Applying a shimmer highlight to the 
arch on the underside of your brow. This can play up that fatty pad that is creating a hooded effect on our eye. Flying over is going to pull attention to the area, but it's going to help create the illusion of things pulling up because you have the arch of the eyebrow, which is almost acting like an arrow to the highlight. And then when you apply it right here, and then always like to taper up, you're creating the illusion of things are being pulled. Uh, very sneaky makeup trick, but try it next time you do your makeup. Now the part of makeup that I think I love the most is blush. I'm gonna use another Korean beauty product. This is from the brand 3CE, and this is their face blush in the shade Mono Paint. Really beautiful, soft, more muted blush shade. And I want to use my same powder brush. And just picking up there, I want to go back and forth. I've already applied the cream blush from Stila. So I'm more so using this as a general motion back and forth and using this large fluffy brush to wipe back and forth. It's going to mostly focus on the high points of my face as that's what it's going to touch the most and then softly diffuse to the lower portions. And then whatever I've left, I'm just going to wrap into the forehead and then pull down. Now, everything that we've done within our makeup placement today to enhance and draw attention to the eyes. The eyes are going to be our focal point that really draws in the attention, garners the drama, but it's still focused on keeping the center portion. So if we think about center of the forehead, down the bridge of the nose, into the mouth, it's going to keep this more T-shaped portion very bright, which is going to have an overall brightening effect on the skin tone. And it's gonna really help to embellish and enhance the look of the light spring color palette. A soft or muted autumn, this is a great blush. You could build this up, wear it a little bit more intentionally, a little bit more heavily. This would be a great everyday blusher shade. So that's just to kind of show you, there are shades that you can borrow between different palettes that work really well when creating a harmonious seasonal color analysis makeup look. Now, if you're not new to my channel, you know I love layering blush. So we need a little bit of blush and it's going to impart some more light. I am gonna use an hourglass ambient strobe light blush. This is in the shade Incandescent Electra. I'm going to continue using that same powder brush. This time I'm going to use the point of my brush and really focus on mixing together all of the shades. I'm going to place it right on the apple, buff back and forth, and then side to side. Now the thing I love about these Hourglass Ambient Strobe Lighting Blushes, they have mixed together their strobe lighting powders, which is almost like a hybrid of a finishing powder and a very elegant sheer highlighter with a blush. So you have this hybrid of finishing powder, blush, and highlighter. So it just creates this almost glassy, reflective blush that is very, very elegant. I am just going to build the color till my heart is content. And when I'm building my cheek color, I want to strike a mid-ground from my eyes to my lips. Technically, the best color for you to wear is brown shade, preferably something with a little bit of a brightness to it. One I love is a mascara I used for a while from the brand Mood, which is another KBD brand. It is a brown, but it's almost like a chocolate brown, and it's not quite as dark as a more Western beauty black brown. But if you're someone who likes to wear black, but you want to tiptoe into brown, I have been loving this Clinique Lash Power Mascara in the shade 04 Dark Chocolate. I'm apply my mascara and I'll be right back to finish the look. My final step of the look is going to be finishing off with the gloss and this is a gloss from Chanel and this is a Rouge Coco gloss in number 72 a Really beautiful peachy pink with a light reflective shimmer. All right, this is going to finish off the light spring or soft spring seasonal color analysis makeup tutorial. I really love this look and it's between the makeup colors, my blazer, it's reminding me of this rainbow sorbet that we had when I was a kid. And sometimes we would have special occasion events at church. There would always be in the fellowship hall, this punch made with like ginger ale in this rainbow sorbet. And it was just so wonderful. And it's just such a like a nostalgic childhood memory. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed creating it. All the products I featured and mentioned today will be linked in the description box down below for your convenience and along with timestamps. So if you wanna see any parts of the videos I mentioned, you can go back and watch at your leisure. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. And feel free to say hi, leave me a comment down below and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you made it to this point in the video. Until 
until next time, I hope you are taking care of yourself wherever it is you are in the world. And I will see you later. Bye, y'all.